Hi guys, welcome to ITTV. I am Mr. Wong, your English teacher. Today, we are going to learn more about summary writing. We are going to move into stage two of summary writing. In stage one, the first thing you have to do is you need to go through the passage and you have to make sure that you understand what you are reading. Because if you are not clear with what you are reading, you are going to have a lot of problems trying to summarize it and identifying the main ideas. Today, we are going to look at the passage again, but this time, instead of looking at words that we don't understand, we are going to be extracting the main idea and the supporting details. With this, we will accomplish step two of writing a good summary. Now, before we begin, we need to read the question carefully. So, without wasting any time, we will start off by looking at some tips for summary writing as well as reading the question. Tips for summary writing. Writing a summary tests your ability to extract the important points from the text. First, pick out the main ideas in each paragraph. Next, pick out the supporting details in each paragraph. Then, outline the points you have picked. Make sure you express these points in your own words or phrases. You have to substitute long expressions with single words. Your summary must be one paragraph in length. Count the number of words used. It must not be longer than 130 words. Now let's take a look at the summary question that we will be doing today. The passage describes the usefulness and abuses of the camera phone. Write a summary of the usefulness and abuses of the camera phone. Your summary must start from the second paragraph, be in continuous writing form, not be longer than 130 words, including the 10 words given below. Credit will be given for the use of own words, but care must be taken not to change the original meaning. Begin your summary as follows. The popularity of the camera phone lies in its convenience. We are now going to move into step two of writing a good summary. We are going to go through the passage. As we go through the passage, you need to identify the main idea and supporting detail in each paragraph. As we do this, start taking note. Now, don't form full sentences yet, just the main idea and the supporting details. We will move into forming full sentences later. Now remember, as you look for the main ideas and supporting details, be careful because some parts of the passage might seem very important, but it might only be a supporting detail. So, let's take a look at the passage together. Comprehension Passage Mobile phones of today have features beyond sending text messages and making voice calls. They also have built-in cameras and camcorders, enabling people to easily capture snippets of everyday life. Invented in 1997, the camera phone now makes up 85% of the mobile phone market. The camera cell phone is ideal, small and tidy to carry around and does produce good quality pictures. With it, it is an easy task to send out a picture to family or friends who may stay far away. The pictures that are saved on it can be easily uploaded onto a computer. Moreover, it is generally 
inexpensive to use, providing we do not abuse it, sending photos all the time to friends. The camera phone provides high-resolution pictures with different zoom options and red eye reduction. The quality of the picture depends on the kind of phone one buys. The high-quality camera mobile phones come with a heavy price tag that sometimes is not affordable for the common man. They come with LED flash, zoom and with high resolution to make it equally as competent as a digital camera. Most camera phones are easier to use than digital cameras. However, their fixed focus lenses and smaller sensors limit their performance in poor lighting. Having no physical shutter, most have a long shutter lag and no flash or optical zoom. Many even lack a USB connection, removable memory card or other ways of transferring their pictures more quickly than by the phone's inherent communication features. While phones have been found to be useful by tourists and also useful for other common civilian purposes since they are cheap, convenient and portable. They have also caused a controversy as they are able to take both still and video images unknown to the subject. A user may pretend to be simply talking on the phone or browsing the internet drawing no suspicion while photographing a person against the person's wishes or a place illegally. However, as a network connected device, megapixel camera phones are playing significant roles in crime prevention, journalism and business applications as well as personal use. People have used them to snap the license plates of traffic violators and catch flashes in action. Intelligence agents use them to snap photos of suspicious travellers aboard planes and beam them to customs agents on the ground. Some TV stations have encouraged workers to use their camera phones to help chronicle news events. On the other hand, camera phones are also prone to abusers such as voyeurism, invasion of privacy and copyright infringement. Enforcing bans on camera phones has proven nearly impossible as they are small and numerous. They are easily hidden or disguised, making it difficult for law enforcement and security personnel to detect or stop their use. From time to time, organizations and places have prohibited or restricted the use of camera phones as well as cameras. Such places include federal and state courts, museums, schools, theatres and local fitness clubs. Some companies are developing technology that would block the cameras. Saudi Arabia in April 2004 banned the sale of camera phones nationwide for a time before allowing their sale in December 2004. In South Korea and Japan, all camera phones sold in the country must make a clear, audible sound whenever a picture is taken. As we went through the passage, did you take note of what you thought was the main idea and supporting details? Good job! Now, let's compare notes. We will look at the main ideas that have been extracted from the passage as well as the supporting details. As we go through this table, compare the main ideas and supporting details here with what you have written. If there are any differences, make the correction. We will then proceed to form sentences. Let's take a look at the slide. Table for main ideas and supporting details. Paragraph 1. The main idea, mobile phones have built-in cameras and camcorders. The supporting details are, this enables people to take pictures and do recording easily. Paragraph 2. The main idea is, camera phones have two benefits. And the supporting details, small and convenient to use, and its pictures 
can be easily uploaded onto a computer. Paragraph 3. The main idea. Quality of the pictures taken can be good. Supporting details. Features are LED flash, zoom and high resolution. Paragraph 4. Main idea. Pictures not as clear as those taken by digital camera. Supporting details. Camera has fixed focus lenses and smaller sensors that limit performance in poor lighting. Paragraph 5. Main idea. Abuse of it. It allows secret photography. Supporting details. User can pretend to be talking on the phone or browsing the internet while photographing a person or place illegally. Paragraph 6. Main idea. Usefulness of camera phone. Supporting details. In crime prevention, journalism, business applications, and personal use. Paragraph 7. Main idea. Camera phones prone to abuse. Supporting details. Enables voyeurism, invasion of privacy, and copyright infringement. Paragraph 8. Main idea. Organizations take preventive measures. Supporting details. Have prohibited or restricted use of camera phones in premises. Paragraph 9. Main idea. Some countries try ways to reduce the use. Supporting details. By banning the sale of camera phones or requiring camera phones to make a clearly audible sound whenever a picture is taken. We have now gone through all of the paragraphs. We have identified the main idea and the supporting details. What you need to do now is you need to form sentences. So, look at the main idea, look at the supporting details and join them as you form sentences. You may begin now. Let's take a look at the sentences that we have formed. The first sentence. Mobile phones have built-in cameras and camcorders enabling them to take pictures and to do recording easily. Second sentence. Camera phones have two benefits as they are convenient to use and its pictures can be easily uploaded onto a computer. Sentence 3. The quality of pictures can be good if the phone has LED flash, zoom, and high resolution. Fourth sentence. However, its pictures are not as clear as those done with a digital camera. For its fixed focus lenses and smaller sensors limit performance due to poor lighting. Fifth sentence. It allows secret photography since the user can pretend to be talking on the phone or browsing the internet while photographing a person or place illegally. Six, the camera phone is very useful in crime prevention, journalism, business applications, and personal use. Seventh sentence, however, it is prone to abuse by enabling voyeurism, invasion of privacy, and copyright infringement. 8. Some organizations and places have prohibited or restricted the use of camera phones in premises. The ninth sentence. Some countries, such as Saudi Arabia, have banned the sale of camera phones. In Japan, 
Camera phones make a clear, audible sound whenever a picture is taken. The sentences that you have written do not have to be identical with these sentences, but the meaning has to remain the same. Now, that is important to remember. Now, if you compile all of these sentences together, you will notice that they are more than 130 words. This will lead us to the final part of writing a good summary, paraphrasing. And this is something we are going to talk about in our next lesson. But for today, go through the paragraphs again. See why the main points that we have talked about are considered the main points. Then look at the supporting details because you need to be able to extract the main point and the supporting details from all the paragraphs. Once that is done, try to form sentences again because this is the second and a very important part of writing a good summary. We will talk about paraphrasing and continuous writing in our next lesson. So, till I see you then, keep on practicing. Understanding the passage and then identifying main ideas and supporting details. Now, remember both these steps because they are crucial. So till I see you next time, go through the passage and identify the main ideas by yourself. Bye-bye.